Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to discuss May Day Eve by Nicomedes Marquez Joaquin, also known as Nick Joaquin, or his pen name, Quejano de Manila. To begin with, let us get to know Sir Nick Joaquin. As I've mentioned earlier, his complete name is Nicomedes Marquez Joaquin, and his pen name is Quejano de Manila. But I think the younger generation now know him better as Nick Joaquin. He was born on May 4, 1917, and he was awarded the National Artist of the Philippines in 1976 under the regime of the late dictator Ferdinand Marcos. Joaquin, who at first did not want to receive the award, finally relented. He accepted the award and requested the release from political detention of an imprisoned fellow poet and journalist, Jose F. Lacaba. This was, of course, granted. In 1966, Joaquin received the Ramon Magsaysay Award for Journalism, Literature, and Creative Communication for exploring the mysteries of the Filipino body and soul in 60 inspired years as a writer. Obviously, Nick is a Filipino writer, historian, and journalist, and he is best known for his short stories and novels in the English language. Um, he had termed, or he had coined, the term tropical gothic. This is uh, to describe the tradition of the Filipino people, which was shaped by the, by the spiritual pool of Spanish Catholicism, the violence and promise of American colonialism, the profound destructiveness of the Pacific War, and the turbulent beginnings of the post-colonial era. On April 29, 2004, Sir Nick Joaquin died of cardiac arrest in the early morning in his home at San Juan Metro, Manila. Before we begin discussing the story May Day Eve, let's get to know our characters, our main characters. We have Doña Agueda. She is a beautiful, young, bold, willing to take risk kind of girl who was willing to test the superstitious belief. As mentioned, she is beautiful and attractive, but then... This woman had lost her luster in the years of bitter marriage to her husband. The next character that we have is Don Badoy Montilla. He is the husband of Don Agueda, who seemed to repent the bitter years he might have given her. He was thinking because Doña Agueda had passed away, perhaps he wasn't a good husband, etc., etc., but in the end, after hearing the stories about him as told by Doña Aguada to her daughter and grandson, he had come to realize or to accept or to acknowledge that he viewed her as a witch. The third one is Anastasia. She is the elderly servant in the house of Don Badoy, who was the host of the party who told the Guada of the power of looking in the mirror to see one's future husband. And then we have Doña Aguada's daughter. She was not named in the short story, but she is a vain young girl who is deeply interested in her mother's story. But well, who isn't interested in her mother's stories, right? In our parents' stories. We would always be curious how they met. What sparked the romance? What keeps the romance going? And th those sorts of curiosities. And then the last one is Voltaire. Voltaire is a young man who was to try what Doña Aguada did in front of the mirror. But then he was seen by his grandfather, Don Badoy. And then we would wonder... If it was us, would we really look at the mirror and ask the mirror, 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 show me the man that I would be marrying? Or mirror, mirror, show me the woman that I'd be marrying? Shouldn't we be afraid? Will we be afraid? Are we afraid? Will we try? We would know as we discuss the story May Day Eve. So let us begin.
May Day Eve. In the late 1840s, that's the setting of the story of Nikukin, during the May Day Eve, as there was a party in the house of Don Badoy, dancing must stop at 10 o'clock in the evening. When the celebration was over, the guests started to decamp. They will go to each assigned room. No? The girls went to their bedroom while the boys, who just came from the university, continued what they chatting, what they were chatting, and they continued their drinking. We have to understand that in the setup of the story or in the setting of the time of the story, there is a different rule regarding the girls and regarding the boys. So when the governess or the one in charge of the girls tell the girls that the evening is done, they have to proceed to their room. While the boys, obviously in the story, they have another agenda. And so, as I've mentioned earlier, they continued their drinking and chatting. Following the directive of the elders, the girls gather in the big room. And so, as they gather, Anastasia, the older servant or the old servant of the house of Don Badoy, would tell them stories of witches, which, of course, would scare the girls. In the 1840s, they're still using candles and lamps to light the surrounding. Even now, if you have enjoyed it or if you had experienced it, I cannot say though that all of us had experienced it, but during brownouts, we enjoyed telling each other horror stories. And then I don't know why, the girls love listening to horror stories, but in the end, they have to help to ask each other's presence in the bathroom, you know, in the comfort room, because they're too afraid to go alone. Anyway, let's continue. In one of these stories, even when the daughter of the mistress of the house tried to sash Anastasia, the latter was still able to tell the girls about the power of a candle and mirror in telling one's future husband. If you remember earlier in the introduction, I've told you about this superstitious belief or this belief that on a May Day Eve, we are to light a candle, face a giant mirror, and ask the mirror to show us the face of our future husband. Would you do that? I wonder. Upon hearing that story, if you remember, I asked you earlier, will you do it? Agueda was so curious. So the curious Agueda wanted to try the ritual, despite the warnings of the other girls. Masarap ang bawal as we put it. The more they try to stop us, the more that we would want to try something. I don't know, we call it reverse psychology. And so, since Agueda wanted to do the ritual, Anastasia then instructed her how to do the ritual involving the mirror. As Agueda knew what she will do, she went to the mirror in their sala and said, Mirror, mirror, show to me him whose woman I will be. So it's not like Snow White. Like, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? In the story of the May Day Eve, we have to ask, mirror, mirror, show to me him whose woman I will be. So Agueda asked the mirror, who would be her future husband? Do you think the mirror will show her? Aren't you curious yet? The moment the Greta finished asking the mirror, the mirror revealed her future husband, Don Badoy, who just came in from the night's revelry. I don't know, um, Badoy in Tagalog has a different meaning, has a different connotation. So perhaps Don Badoy too here would be Badoy in our age, but of course not in the description. He was handsome. He was attractive. He just came from the university. And so he has a different magnet. Or he, he shows off different magnet. He magnetizes women to him. As he was walking into the sala where Agueda was, he was mesmerized by her beauty. And he tried to talk to her. But then, during this particular night, 
she tried to evade him. Is it Pakipot? Or she too was too scared of the power of the mirror. She evaded him. Iyang iwasan. Don Bedoy fell in love with her there and then, vowing to marry her. No, it's like seeing a beautiful woman and would say, Ah, pakaslan ko by Hanabay. And stuffs like that. So he fell in love. Will he woo her? Will he really be true to this vow of marrying her? Let's continue. Don Bedoy pursued her. Ah, gipanguyaban yu de siya. Niligawan talaga, di ba? And in the end, they got married and had children. A beautiful woman married to a handsome man. Isn't that lovely? Hmm? There was no direct mention on the state of their marriage, though, in the story. But then, this would be revealed soon in the conversation of the grandfather with his grandson, where he would learn how Doña Agueda would describe the man she saw in the mirror. Oh, so all throughout, we would never know. Are they happy? Is their marriage as beautiful as the couple? Or was it just for the show? But who would know? Who among us can tell really that this couple is has is happy? Who among us would be able to show or to tell that this couple would get a divorce? And stuffs like that. We can never tell. Although we never knew the state of marriage Don Badoy and Doña Agueda had, they had a daughter who became the bearer or the listener of the Doña's side of the story. Doña Agueda, we would know soon, had tried, or we would know in the story as we read through it, of course, had tried to dissuade her husband from doing the ritual, telling her of the fateful night in the house of Don Badoy. She told her daughter that after performing the ritual, she saw the devil. Can you imagine that? Now, these answers are question. Were they happy? Were they happy to be each other? Of course, we know that it was just a flashback already because Doña Agueda had passed away. But then really... Who among us would say that our husband is a devil? It's like saying you're being married to the devil himself. How bad was he? Is he really that scary? What do you mean when you say he is the devil? No? We had heard the side of the Donya. We know how she had described the man that she saw in the mirror as a devil. But of course, we as the readers, as the listeners, would have known that it was Don Badoy. Now, long after Doña Agueda passed away, Don Badoy caught his grandson Voltaire, wanting to do the same ritual. Young people are always curious, but we have always been warned that curiosity kills the cat. Anyway... The young man told the old man where he had learned of it, telling his old man or his grandfather along the way that Doña Agueda had mentioned that instead of seeing her future husband, she saw the devil. So it was consistent. He had, or this grandson Voltaire had told his lolo indirectly that he got the story or he got the ritual of how to do it from his um, Lola. But then, like the daughter of Doña Agueda, this grandson Voltaire was told that by Doña Agueda herself that instead of seeing the future husband as mentioned by Anastasia, she saw instead the devil. This angered Don Badoy. Uy! He was very angry. Thus, he started telling stories about him doing the ritual. Mubalos, gumaganti, no? I don't know. Perhaps when people hit us, really, or when people hurt us, our general tendency is to hit back. It might just be very human. And said that instead of seeing his future wife, 
he saw a witch warning against <clears throat> so he saw a witch so let's go back Agueda saw the devil but Doy saw the witch but in the first part of the story we knew that when Agueda was facing the mirror, it was Badoy she saw. And Badoy on that fateful May Day Eve, it was Agueda that she had seen. So now, again, it tells us the state of their marriage. So he warned Voltaire against the ritual, saying that if he continued to do it, he might just end up seeing a witch as well. Although the story did not really tell us if Voltaire pushed through with his plan of doing the ritual of knowing who the woman of his life would be, somehow it suggests that he followed the suggestion of his grandfather not to do so. So in the end, after hearing the story, the side of Doña Aguada and the side of Don Badoy about what they saw on that mirror that night, we would know that after many years of marriage, theirs ended up sour. Well, who would really know, right? Marriage is a journey. We do not know if the moment we take it would really survive the test. But in the end, I think it's a very personal idea, though, that the fate of our marriage, as well as our happiness, depends greatly in our decision. Perhaps in our time now, yes, it's a lot different compared to the setting of 1840s. Because women have career now. And at the same time, women are not as scared as before or as subservient as before. Now the women have a voice. They have the power or they have at least the ability to tell their man what they think and the men uh, with respect to them of course also had learned to listen like they they weigh the thoughts of their wives like for example the people or the couple that you admire oftentimes when we approach the man we would be told you approach my wife, or you tell my wife, or I'll tell my wife. And if the woman, if you approach the woman, the woman would tell you, oh, I'll ask my husband, or I'll talk to my husband yet, and then I'll tell you of our decision. This would show us that the man and the woman now basically are more or less a partner. They respect each other's view. They listen to one another. And in the end, we would understand that perhaps in the May they give, there was really lacking of communication. Yes, the start was romantic. Even nowadays, the start might be romantic, but if we don't talk to each other, we would lose that magic. So my friends, our May Day Eve will tell us that for a love story to endure, for us not to see the devil, or the witch. We must learn to reach out. We have to learn how to talk to communicate with each other. With that, I thank you all for listening in our lecture on the May Day Eve by Nick Joaquin. I hope you have enjoyed listening to it and you have learned even just a teeny weeny bit of idea about the short story. In the end, I would still suggest that you read the short story itself because really, there is nothing that beats reading the story on its original source. Thank you and keep safe, everyone.